One of the most confusing thing for a lot of people when it comes to 3D printing is um, how to get the Z offset just right. The Z offset is the distance between the printer nozzle and the bed. So this is something that is quite difficult, especially if you're a newcomer to 3D printing. A lot of people get scared by the Z offset uh, because they're afraid that they're going to scratch their bed or they're afraid that the nozzle will hit the bed. And uh, this is something that actually uh, acts as a deterrent for a lot of people from getting into 3D printing. I know that when I first was thinking of getting into this hobby, I would watch YouTube videos and it really scared me when I thought about the idea of having to level the bed and get the Z offset. But the reality is that it's not that difficult. Leveling the bed, getting the correct Z offset is fairly easy if you do it manually or if you use a automatic bed leveling system such as the BL Touch or the CR Touch. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to get the Z offset just right with an automatic bed leveling system such as the BL Touch or the CR Touch. If you want to know how to do this stay tuned and I'll be right back. All right, so setting the Z offset is tricky for a lot of people. And if you have an automatic bed leveling system, you still need to set the Z offset just right. It has to be done properly because otherwise your prints aren't going to turn out. So an automatic bed leveling system like the BL Touch or the CR Touch, they set the mesh of the bed, but the automatic bed leveling system has absolutely no clue about the Z offset. What it takes care of is an uneven bed, but you always need to do the Z offset manually. So in the case of my printer, as you can see here, the distance right now from the bed is 10 millimeters. So it's the distance of the ABL probe from the bed. And this does not take into consideration at all the Z offset. So maybe showing you exactly what I mean will help to clarify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the probe and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now the probe is down and I'm going to slowly lower the Z axis and we'll see when the probe engages with the bed. So I'm going to go to motion, move axis, move Z axis, and I will move it at one millimeter increments. So let's move it down and see what happens. At zero here, the probe should engage with the bed. And it does. However, as you can see, the nozzle is still very high off the bed. There's a lot of distance between the nozzle and the bed, which means that if you print this way, the filament is just going to extrude in midair. So we need to close the gap between the bed and the nozzle and that will constitute your Z offset. And that's what we're going to do now. But 
first we need to heat the printer nozzle and the bed so that we can get it to be exactly the way it will be when we print. So before we do that, we need to rehome the, the, the printer. And we need to also heat the bed and the nozzle. So we'll go to temperature and we'll heat the bed to 60 degrees. Okay, so we'll heat the bed to 60 degrees. And we'll heat the nozzle to 200 degrees. Now one thing that's going to be very important is to pull the filament out of the Bowden tube because if there's any filament oozing uh, from the nozzle, it's going to get in the way of us doing a proper Z offset. So we'll wait for the uh, extruder and the bed to heat up to the right temperature and then I'm going to raise the gantry and I will pull the filament out of the Bowden tube. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to pull it out all the way. If you just pull it about to here so that it's in the Bowden tube, that way you don't have to reinsert the filament from scratch. Just put it up here and um, that way uh, it's not going to get in the way of uh, the calibration of the z-axis. When we're done that, we can just put it back down to the extruder. Okay, so now that uh, the temperatures are where we want them to be, we're just going to uh, move the z-axis, we'll move it up, and we'll take out the filament. As you can see, there's a lot of filament here, right? And uh, it's oozing out a little bit. So I'm just going to remove the filament. All right. So it's up here right now. And I'm going to clean off the filament that's in the nozzle here. Just going to take that off. Okay, there we go. Perfect. And now we're ready to do the Z offset. All right, so I'm going to have to home the printer again. So now that the uh, printer is homed, we'll start doing the actual Z offset calibration. And uh, for this, you'll need a piece of paper. I like to use a sticky note like this. It's something that's worked for me, but you can use any uh, piece of paper, really. It'll work. So we're going to put the piece of paper under the nozzle. Like so. And then we're going to go to motion, move axis, and move Z. And we're going to move down in one millimeter increments. 
So we know that at zero, the nozzle is still way off the bed. So we can quickly just move it down to zero. And sure enough, the uh, nozzle is way off the bed. So now we're going to go and move it down in uh, increments that are a little uh, smaller. So we're going to go to 0 0.1 millimeter. And we'll slowly move down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, at 8. At 8, the nozzle is just touching the paper. At 9, okay, at 9, I can't even move the paper. So this tells me that 9 is too much. So I need to go down further than 8, but not quite as far as 9, uh, uh, point 0.9 millimeters. So the way I'm going to do this is by just going to uh, smaller increments. So I'm going to go to 0 0.25 millimeters, and then I will move down 0.25, and I can still move the paper. And at 8 point, at 8.50, the paper is uh, perfect. So uh, now I can move the paper, but the nozzle is grabbing the paper, which tells me that the Z offset is 0 0.850. So basically, I'm going to take that number, I'm going to write it down, and then I need to actually input that number into the Z offset command, which you will find here. configuration probe probe z offset and this is where i need to put in minus 85 okay so minus 85 and that is my Z offset. So at that point, once you've done that, you need to save your settings. So store settings. And now your Z offset is stored to EEPROM. So we can now go home. And we'll see that the Z offset is um, shown in the numbers that will be on the screen. All right, so we've got here 10.85, so the Z offset has been set for the printer. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is print a test to confirm that the Z offset has been set correctly and that the print works well across the entire bed. Typically, this kind of a print would be one or two layers high and is merely meant to confirm that the bed is level, that the automatic bed leveling mesh is working, and that the Z offset is the right distance from the bed to ensure that the print has the optimal amount of squish. While it's easy to create a simple print on your own, I went to Thingiverse and downloaded this customizable bed level calibration test by Timfu. While doing the print, it was evident that the layers were going down very well and that there was just the right amount of squish. I really thought that this turned out very, very well. Typically, you want the layer lines to stick. You do not want them to be too close together, however, 
or too far apart. Now, before I go, there's another thing that you should know. When calibrating the Z offset, you may run into a problem where you can't lower the Z axis below zero. If this happens, it means that the Z offset soft limit switch function is turned on in your firmware. This is used as a safety measure to help protect your bed by preventing your nozzle from smashing into it. So you'll need to turn this off with the M211 S0 G code command before you can proceed with calibrating your Z offset. The easiest way to do this is by using the G code terminal in a program such as Octoprint. Now, given that my Z offset soft limit switch was on, I needed to turn it off myself. In any event, this is all there is to setting your Z offset properly. I hope that this beginner tutorial has been helpful to you. If it has, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and also click on the notification bell. Subscribing to the channel inspires me to make more video content and it costs you absolutely nothing. So until next time, happy printing and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.